What's happening guys, I'm TechSource and today we'll be taking a look at an exciting and brand new gaming monitor that's going to be entering the US market very soon. The KTC M27P20 Pro is aimed to bring a better price to gamers who are looking to game in 4K resolution and 160Hz refresh rate with a 1 millisecond response time. They're going for $800 retail once available, which is a really good price considering there aren't any other mini LED gaming monitors with the same specs. So who the hell is KTC and where did they come from? Well, they're actually a popular brand in China. They used to be an OEM for brands like NEC, Samsung, and ViewSonic, but eventually decided to make their own monitors. Let's start with the build construction. You get a very ugly and bulky, yet functional stand that offers swivel, tilt, 180 degree full rotation on either side and height adjustment, eliminating the need for a mount. However, the monitor is VESA compatible, so if you want to hook this up to your desk or the wall, you have that option. You just have to disconnect the neck piece, revealing the holes behind it. The monitor will definitely look more aesthetically pleasing without the bulky stand because it does have very thin bezels with a decent sized chin. So if you are going to mount this, I think it will look really nice in your setup. As I stated earlier, this is an IPS monitor with mini LED backlighting. And without boring you guys to death talking about all the different types of panels, just know that mini LED is a subgenre of LED displays. The difference between LED and mini LED comes from the size of the light emitting diodes used in their backlights. As the name suggests, mini LEDs are about half the size of a typical LED. That lets companies fit more LEDs into their display, which results in greater contrast. And in most cases, they are typically brighter than OLED panels without the risk of burn-in. In short, they're basically two steps underneath OLED in terms of image quality, and that's basically where most of the budget is allocated. The KTC does exceptionally well in color reproduction. I mean, the image is super bright, it's vibrant, and while the blacks aren't as deep as an OLED panel, the monitor still does fairly well in dark scenes. The contrast is great, the whites aren't too bright, and the blacks aren't too dark, making it very easy to spot enemies in the dark while gaming. Color accuracy is also really good, covering 100% of sRGB color space, 100% from Adobe RGB, and 98% from DCI-P3, making this a great choice for color sensitive work. It does look like KTC didn't cheap out on the IPS panel. Viewing angles are exceptional. I didn't notice any color distortion vertically or horizontally. It did retain its color very well from all angles. IPS panels do fairly well with backlight bleed and it seemed to be the case here. I didn't notice any significant backlight bleed to a point where it would be distracting while watching content or gaming. Same with the ghosting test. No ghosting or corona artifacts present during the UFO test and the response time test. This is one fast monitor and I really enjoyed my time gaming on it. Okay, let's talk connectivity. So we have the usual display port, two HDMI and a headphone jack followed by multiple USB 3 ports. We got two for downstream and one for upstream. One feature I like on the KTC monitor is that it comes with a built-in KVM switch, meaning you can use the same monitor, keyboard, and mouse on two different systems. I plugged in my dongle for both my keyboard and mouse and connected my LG Gram via USB-C. Then when I need to switch to the laptop, I just use the input shortcut from the menu and switch over to the USB-C input where my LG Gram is connected. And I'm able to use a laptop with the same monitor, keyboard, and mouse. This is a very useful feature for those rocking a single monitor on their setup. This will prevent you from using multiple keyboards and mice and will help keep your surface clutter free. The USB-C port also supports charging up to 90 watts, so you can charge your phone, tablet, or in my case, a laptop at the same time. Accessing the menu is done by using the joystick in the back, and this is also where you have to enable FreeSync or G-Sync since it comes out of the box disabled. You also have the option of changing the color of the RGB lighting in the back of the monitor, which I found very useless. You can only select from three solid colors or a breathing effect, but the light itself is very dim, so you don't even know it's there. I mean, your room has to be pitch black and the monitor has to be up against a white wall for you to experience any sort of ambient lighting. The built-in speakers have extremely low volume. They shouldn't be used to listen to anything or watch anything, but more so for uh, window sounds and recording purposes. This leads me to the conclusion. I'm just having trouble justifying the price. I feel like it's reasonably priced for the features and specs that it offers, especially considering other 4K mini LED monitors cost way more. The AOC Aegon is $1,300, but it's not even in 4K resolution, and the ASUS ProArt display isn't even made for gaming, yet it goes for $2,000. So yeah, the KTC is actually the most cost-effective monitor with these specs, but is it worth it? 
I don't know that many people that would pay extra just to have a mini LED monitor. There are plenty of IPS LCD monitors that do just as good in image quality and they have higher refresh rates. So for the average competitive gamer, this is not the ideal monitor. It's more targeted for the content creators who like to game. It's also worth noting that this monitor is certified by VESA HDR1000, which just adds to the value. And this is the same exact panel that's used in the Sony InZone M9 monitor. I'll drop a link to the KTC monitor below if you guys want to check it out. They did send us an extra one to give away. Details for that will be in our Discord server, and I'll drop a link to that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.